What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Bear here today with a look at White Dwarf 107. This is the new issue and we got new Space Wolves coming in hot right on the heels of the new supplement coming out, new Space Wolf rules, new Demon rules, all sorts of new rules and it looks like we're going into a week two starting next week and if you're judging by the rumors in here, we might even see three weeks of 40k here in a row. It's crazy! Now if we can just uh, extend that streak out a little bit longer, I think I think a lot of hobbyists out there will be a little bit happier um, you know when it comes to uh, new releases and things because it's been a it's been a scratchy seven weeks of no 40k releases here at January going into February but before we get to all that I would like to invite you to stay in the trenches click on the patreon link there and help keep our videos ad free for 2016 make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out the blog spikybitsblog.com and of course head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access videos and more become a veteran of the Long work today. So, like I was saying, this is a great issue. I uh, got one data sheet in here on the iron, um, the iron priest himself, which they definitely updated him, and it's definitely something we're going to talk about here. And here's the contents. Of course, we got the new releases. Uh, then we got, you know, they slid in a parallel release of Age of Sigmar into the White Dwarf. So you got the Forces of Death, the Grand Alliance Death, which is Nagash and all his cronies, and then you got that Golden Demon feature on the Space Marines. Uh, which was from November, I believe. Paint Splatter article on uh, Ulrich, and I think the Iron Priest as well. I forget actually. It was a it was a four page one. It was really good. The Sons of Rust, you know, just more fluff rules on the Iron Priest, and then this week in White Dwarf, we don't really go over that because it's just kind of like some studio wrap up stuff. But there he is. There's Ulrich and the Iron Priest. Now it looks like Ulrich's rules haven't changed, uh, but the Iron Priest most definitely have. Now they're going to be clan pack releases coming out next week or going on pre order next week. I, excuse me, they go on pre-order this week, they come out next week. It's, I, sometimes I live in the future. I apologize. <laughs> uh, so you got those guys, they're 30 bucks each, and they look great. I mean, uh, I, I think a lot of people are like, yo, these guys are getting Age of Sigmar, like, squatted, and, you know, I don't like the poses, but I, I, I think they're pretty dynamic. I think they're pretty dope looking. Of course, they're on the 32 millimeter base. And you know what? To be quite honest, a lot of those Age of Sigmar models are pretty dope and very dynamic. I mean, just look at the starter set. Like, there's some pretty good looking stuff in there. Then, of course, Wolf Lord Krom is making his triumphant return. Now, he was the guy that came in the Stormclaw box for the big Red Wall campaign, I think, in. I want to say 2014, the summer of 2014, I want to say, uh, maybe a little off there. It might have been 13, but I'm pretty sure it was 14. And so he's coming out, um, the miniature himself on a 40 mil base, you know, just uh, just kicking it. He figures heavily into the new uh, fluff side of the uh, Curse of the Wolfen book. So that's kind of cool to see him and him coming back and he's got his rules. Uh, he's got a data slate in the Curse of the Wolfen supplement. Then brand new collecting space wolf box the start collecting box there's a starter box as people like to call them it's a good deal there's $114 retail in this box if you include the $20 or excuse me the the space marine captain here which isn't a, they say it's a wolf lord but he's really just the space marine captain uh, sprues but that's okay I mean $114 you're getting it for $85 if you get a discount at your store it's just like double dipping so hey you know, money, 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 save it where you can so you can get all that other great hobby stuff. Some Black Library books, the Grand Alliance Death books coming out, which I thought was pretty cool because it's only $16.50. It's an 88 page uh, soft cover book. So generally, we saw stuff like that go for 40 So I don't really get their pricing schema uh, sometimes with the Age of Sigmar. You get these hard covers that are really expensive, you get these soft covers that are really cheap, you get these new models that uh, something comparable in 40 k might have been $75, whereas in Age of Sigmar, they're $105. I just don't know how to make heads or tails of it. I just know 88 pages for 16.50. Hey, that seems like a good value to me, especially when it's rules. So I'm gonna go with that. That's what my gut's telling me. And then of course, Horus Heresy book uh, six retribution with all the shattered legion rules apparently is available now. Don't know if it is yet. <laughs> um, you know, last week the Mastodon was supposed to be on sale already. Hasn't haven't seen that one up for sale yet. So maybe. Forge World is going to be dropping a whole bunch of videos or a whole bunch of pre-orders out um, ASAP because I haven't seen anything on it quite yet. And then it gets into some of the stuff that's already currently available. Now, it gets into some uh, some of the death stuff here for uh, Age of Sigmar, which we're not really going to touch on. And then, of course, this uh, fantastic looking Golden Demon entry from uh, Captain Vincent of the Blood Angels. Now, Golden Demons, it, it's gotten a little weird because like they do different Golden Demons. They're like, yo, 
we're running a Golden Demon uh, for single miniatures at this event over in Nottingham. And then, oh, hey, it's vehicles for this event. Or, uh, you know, and it's this and it's that at these events. So it's it's not quite what it used to be, but it's it's starting to become, I guess, more standardized. Now, if you're like me and you live in America and you remember the games days of old, which pretty much have uh, become non-existent, you know, it's, it's kind of a sad time. Um, when it comes to that but you know maybe in the future games workshop will will start the competitions back up start those great you know demos in and, and open gaming and all the, the cool things they had at the games day you know some free previews you know some awesome um you know just events and and like kind of um uh it was it like uh i guess like campaign boards like what do you call it narrative boards like just that all that cool stuff and of course you could always pick up forge world you know it was just it was really a magical time and i think that the hobby the whole bringing the hobby back thing that we do here at spiky bits in long war you know has really kind of um so i kind of gotten away from that you know so it'd be really cool to see games workshop bring those back and bring the golden demons back to america and kind of see where that goes because you know they're opening all these stores at this this feverish pace but you know get some sort of get some sort of events going again you know it's you see organized play for so much stuff out there and then you're just like where's games workshops organized play where's games workshops conventions <sighs> you know and it's it's just it's disappointing sometimes to be quite honest but then again i understand hey they're headquartered in, in england you know the guys over here a lot of the people you know like fantasy flight that's doing stuff wizards that's doing stuff they're in America, they got their, you know, they got their pulse on the hobby, there's a lot of politics between America and England, you know, uh, yada, 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 internal politics with Games Workshop, you know, I could, I could spend hours and hours talking about all that stuff, but I get where the problems are, but somebody really needs to get in there and start, start kicking some ass and taking some names over there and get, get the, get the hobby back, man, I mean, it's, it's in the right direction. I feel like from a year ago, you know, you used to see all this whack stuff happening at tournaments and hear of all this whack stuff. And I feel like it, it's, you don't see it as much anymore at the, at the bigger events. Yeah, you hear about isolated instances, but I definitely feel like the, the magic is starting to come back to the hobby. And that's, that's definitely good to see. And this stuff like this is always beautiful to see too. And then we got the Ulrich of the Slayer paint splatter article, which looks really good. Uh, gives you some ideas on painting beards, which we haven't really seen before. Wolf pelts, definitely haven't seen that before. Some great looking cloaks that are more of a brown red than like a purple red. We've seen a lot of the purples and things, um, the orange and, and, and kind of those uh, accents with the dwarfs and things like that. Now it's nice to see a nice solid red and a solid brown red there. Some skulls, some skull detail and some metal detail right there. And then we kick over to the Iron Priest himself and you can kind of see some of the, uh, what is it? The uh, Space Wolf armor, the old Space Wolf grays, so to speak. You got these gold details, which we've seen a lot of that, but some of the, the browns and the, or excuse me, the blacks, and then the, the cogs and things. So a lot more detailed of a, of a tutorial in this one than, than what we've seen in the past. And I always like four of these. Now here we're seeing it two uh, two bitter adversaries for next week. That is the teaser for the paint splatter. So I don't know what two bitter adversaries is. I think it's something to do with Krom and his bitter adversary, which I don't know if that's a demon. I don't know if that's an orc. Uh, you know, there's all this stuff happening on Fenris with demons, but now, hey, maybe it's Dark Angels. I don't know because Dark Angels and Space Wolves were always at each other's necks back in the day. So it's really, really, really hard to say. But I haven't read up enough on the fluff of Krom to actually know what that's talking about. And then it gets into a feature on the Sons of Rus. And then the rules for the Iron Priest, which I want to talk about a little bit because this actually figures into uh, a lot of important things on the tabletop as far as the competitive and the non competitive scene. So uh, the good thing about this is now he is an HQ slot, so you can't um, kind of multiple spam him in the elite slot for the Company of the Great Wolf formation. He is also 20 points more than he used to be, but he comes with an extra wound and he has an extra point of leadership. So if you put this guy on a Thunder Wolf mount, like a lot of uh, Thunderstar or uh, um, excuse me, Super Friendless do, you know, you are getting a three wound character with a two up save with a strength 10 uh, power attack. At, and it, yeah, unwieldy, you know, so it's like, hmm, okay, you know, we talked about this on the Long War webcast the other night, where basically 
it's almost worth taking a wolf guard battle leader now on Thunder Wolf Mount instead of taking this gentleman because um, as far as the points go, the the extra twenty points really matters when you're taking three of these guys. You know, that's sixty points savings. And sixty points is a good chunk chunk of points in an eighteen fifty list, you know. So you kinda gotta weigh those options now. Now while the cyber wolves are good and you can take multiples of them, a wolf guard battle leader can only take two Fenrisian wolves. But the Fenrisian wolves help out with the grav component. So if you have more um, you know, mixed, excuse me, majority armor of a four up, grab isn't going to be as big of a thing against your wolf star, your death star, as it would be if you had, um, you know, the, the cyber wolf. So it's just something interesting to, to kind of keep in mind all the mechanics here, um, that what's going on. And then it gets, just gets into more stuff. They're talking about Chrome and what's going on with Chrome and uh, Ulrich and things like that. And that's that's pretty much it. The teaser overall was um, something about, oh, Tactical Supremacy, a Xenos Coalition, and Krom's Nemesis. Now, I I don't even know. I, I couldn't even begin to tell you what that might be. Tactical Supremacy kind of sounds like Death Watch, but maybe it isn't. Maybe it's something to do with Crusades. Um, you know, the Dark Angel Crusade, the, the 12 strong chapters descending on Fenris. Uh, Xenos Coalition, I don't know. Maybe it's Gene Steelers, maybe it's Tyranids, maybe it's Tyranids and Orcs, maybe it's Gene Steeler Hybrids, maybe it's an allusion to uh, another campaign book that's coming out. Krom's Nemesis, I thought was Orcs, but hey, I don't know anymore. Everything's super crazy right now. It's a fun time to be in the hobby, in my opinion. So that's pretty much it for the White Dwarf. It's a great one. Uh, there's lots of cool stuff in here. It's definitely worth picking up. I mean, especially right there with that, that big paint splatter article of, you know, four pages. I mean, I'm definitely a fan of that. You know me. Um, anytime there's a four page paint splatter in the issue, that's good. You get new rules in here. That's definitely good with uh, the Iron Priest. Now, uh, well, uh, Ulrich is actually a data slate in the Curse of the Wolf and 2. He didn't change. So it doesn't have new rules. So you probably, if you have the Space Wolf decks, you already got that guy right there. So that's about it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching my review of the new White Dwarf issue 107.